Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Seminar Sunday. This is our first edition of Seminar Sunday after the rebranding of Webinar Wednesday. This is District 21's weekly webinar series. Tonight, we're going to be talking about success plans. Primarily, we'll be focusing on club success plans, but we will also be touching very briefly on area, division, and possibly even district success plans. We, this is part of a series of, as I mentioned earlier, weekly webinars, and we do have a number of interesting ones coming up in the coming weeks, which we'll display on your screen if you're joining us on the computer. If you're joining us live on telephone, then uh, I'll just read out the next couple of one uh, weeks worth of seminars. Next week, we have What's the Difference? Sponsor, Mentor, and Coach. That will be hosted by District 21 Club Growth Director Jan Ireland. The following week, we will be going over the basics of the Pathways Educational Experience. And then we'll be talking about running a speech craft program. This series is intended to go every single week with the exception of a two-week break at the end of December 2018. Other than that, we will make sure to fill up the agenda with interesting topics that are relevant to clubs around the world, and we hope that you'll be able to join us for many of them. If you have an idea or suggestion, I'd love to hear about it as well. My contact information will be provided at the end of this seminar. So the first thing that I felt the need to show you is this classic saying that you often hear or at least I have often heard the term, failing to plan is planning to fail. And that is one of the reasons that I wanted to start out with success plans and talking about the importance of them, no matter what level of the organization you're working at, because I think there's a real benefit to putting that hard work in at the start of the program year, planning where you want to go next, and then delivering on it. I think that's the easy part then if you've planned really well is actually delivering the results that you've you've come to achieve. The idea of this seminar is we will have kind of bursts of information that I will provide and then there's a chat area for those of you that are attending on the computer you'll be able to input any questions or ideas you have. If you, if you want to go ahead and put questions in while I'm talking, please go ahead and uh, when we get to the portions where we're doing some question and answer, I will make sure to answer some of those questions for you. All right, moving right along here. So let's start with the basic. What is a success plan? Well, there's a, a couple of different success plans and they come in, <clears throat> excuse me, two different manuals. One of them is the Distinguished Club Program and Club Success Plan Manual, which comes to each club in late April or early May. In the uh, There's a big package that usually goes to the club president, but it goes to the club's mailing address. So if the club president isn't the person set up to be the mailing address, it will go to whatever that is. You do want to double check club central to make sure your club is up to date in terms of a mailing address because that package is important and it comes every year. In it you have your club leadership handbooks, speech contest rule book, and a letter from world headquarters along with this manual. The other side of it is if you're an area or division director there's the district recognition program manual which is included with the district leadership handbook that's usually presented to area and division directors at district officer training when they're trained in their respective roles. So that is where you will find it. And what the actual plan is, is comprised of really it, it's three sections. There's the team operating procedure section, I like to call it, which more or less talks about how often the team meets, how you handle any type of conflict within the team and those types of dynamics. There's the success goals area, which is all about meeting the distinguished club program goals for clubs or supporting the district mission if you're an area or division director. And then finally, there's the sign off area, the signature area. So all the success plans are universal in that sense. And a lot of them have the exact same questions. The ultimate goal of the club success plan is to fulfill the club mission. 
which is we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. And if you take a look into the club success plan, which we will be pulling up one in just a moment, you'll notice very much that it is actually heavily aligned with the moments of truth. It, it's all about the different experiences that a member gets. So I'm just going to pull up uh, what the moments of truth are here. So this is what a moments of truth is comes down to when you look at a club's quality and there's the six different categories that it breaks down starting with of course first impressions and then getting into you know what what's happening when a member joins what kind of spirit do you have within your club are your meetings well organized do you do you have enough members to run a quality meeting and are achievements being recognized so that's really what it's all about when it comes to the club success planning is making sure that your plan is heavily aligned with the the goal set out here in order to achieve a quality club the other side of the plan of course as i mentioned is the area division and district success plans which is based off the, the district mission we build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence Encompassing that, of course, is the club mission. The biggest difference between a district success plan and a club success plan comes in that, that middle section that I talked about, which is about the goal setting. So for a district, they're actually using the paid clubs, membership payments, and distinguished clubs as their goals whereas a club is actually looking at the education awards, your membership growth, taking care of your administrative requirements uh, that are attached with the Distinguished Club Program. So that's really the biggest difference between the two. And uh, you'll notice that I took the screenshot here of District 9, the only presence distinguished district in North America this, uh, this past program year. So I thought, kudos to them, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put this up as a, as a, a little tribute to District 9. So that is the, the area and division district success plans and how, how they differ. Is there any other questions or discussion anybody wants to have before, before we move along? Due dates, excellent question. So Virginia has asked, if we could go over due dates related to the club success plan or division and uh, area success plans. There is not a formal due date. And I think that's one of the challenges with the, the, the current system. The only portion of the success plan that actually goes to world headquarters or anywhere officially is the district success plan. And that is due by September 30th of every program year. There's a lot of value to doing a club success plan, doing an area success plan, doing a division success plan, but for whatever reasons, Toastmasters International has not actually officially made it a, a rule or offered any type of way to submit the plans to world headquarters to make it part of a, any type of distinguished programs. Don't know exactly why that is. I do think there would be value to having that because of, of course we all tend to be procrastinators, but ha sitting down and actually forcing ourselves to do this plan really makes us plan ahead and consider what we need to do at certain times of the year in order to achieve success. So thank you very much for that question, Virginia. I really appreciate it. And it looks like we have another question. Sorry, just a moment. Who reviews these plans? All right, so that's a great question. Who reviews the the uh, the plans? The this this is. Um, it depends on the level, I think, and what the district is doing. Because we have attendees from, from multiple districts, you, you'd want to check with your district team in terms of whether or not they have an interest in reviewing the plans. 
for club success plans, regardless if the, the district is asking for it or not, I strongly encourage that clubs go to their area director and ask, ask them, hey, what do you think of this plan? Invite your area director to come to an executive meeting where you're talking about the plan because they, they have great contributions they can offer that I think would uh, would certainly help any club, whether you're you're a club that's consistently present, distinguished, and doing really well, or whether you're a club that's that's um, having some challenges with uh, with keeping your membership numbers up. There's there's value to that. For areas, encourage the division directors to to look at that and and support that. The big part of the division director role is in supporting the area directors. So if the division director is not reviewing the plan the area director has, then it makes it hard for the division director to support the area director and their goals. And division directors certainly submitting to, to the district leadership is helpful because it gives the district leadership an idea where they want to go. And because the district has until September 30th to submit that their plan, there's time to review the division plans and make sure they're aligned with, uh, with what the district is planning before it submits it online. And I don't think anybody reviews the the district plan, although one thing I certainly have found is whenever I've been in a district leadership role, I always look at the prior year's plans. That's one of the benefits to, to uh, the district plan is it's actually saved in District Central and the next year's teams can actually go and read all the prior plans that have been submitted, which is excellent. So thanks again for that question. How will clubs be encouraged to prepare and submit their club success plans? That is an excellent question. One of the things that we have done, Jeff, in the prior uh, couple of weeks is we've not run a number of club success plan sessions at training events around the district. So we are working with many different leaders from, from clubs to provide them those resources through that training channel. We'll be posting information on the District 21 website as well and in the newsletter coming up to promote it, to let them know the benefits of it, to make sure that every club is aware why they should have success plans. And we're going to also be encouraging the area directors to ask their clubs to submit to them. And that way the area director can support them through whatever their plan is. One of my personal pet peeves has always been when you read an area director report and you see everybody's getting their education award on June 30th. We all know that's not the case. There's a large amount of members that do get awards towards the end of June as they're crunching to get them through in the, the program year. But certainly there's members that earn around the year and I think it's just a lot of clubs don't necessarily have that that foresight of who's going to finish awards through the year and plan the recognition for that so that's how we'll be helping clubs submit their success plans uh, Michael said in my district the clubs are supposed to have theirs in by July 7th and the area directors by July 10th wow that's that's a very tight turnaround it's uh, incredible. <laughs> Three days extra, but uh, but that's good because, you know, obviously if clubs are following through and submitting by July 7th, then they've got a whole year minus a week to action whatever their plan happens to be, which is, which is good because I've seen clubs that try to sign it off in February and that's not to the benefit of the members, unfortunately. Dana... Uh, asks, is the Distinguished Club program in line with Pathways? Yes, and I will quickly go over the Distinguished programs towards the end of the call. The Pathways program right now, because it's in a transitional phase, will have this program year, that's the 2018 to 2019 program year, as well as the 2019-2020 program year, where you can earn traditional or Pathways awards, and they will earn credit towards your club. Uh, are we supposed to include our clubs in doing the plan? Thanks for the question, Navi. Uh, I think that's really depends on, it would be part of it. 
certainly. I think that the team operating principle section, that's the, the first area of the success plan, is going to be based on that specific team. So for example, uh, you know, how's your team going to handle conflicts? Well, that you wouldn't want to involve a whole club with that, but you may consider, for example, your club presidents to be part of your team because, or even the VP's educations and the VP membership, if you're in, doing an area success plan, then you'd want to figure out, okay, well, how are we going to handle our conflicts if we have any? So that's a nice conversation to have. In terms of the the paid clubs goal, you're probably not going to ask your club about that. You may ask if they have suggestions on new clubs that could be started, but not necessarily on how how am I going to start a new club. Unless you're you've got a really active club that wants to support you and going out and finding a spot to start a new club, and uh, in which case that's excellent. So I think there's some discretion there on which sections you want to include them on. You may not even necessarily say this is the area success plan I'm working on. It may just be here's some topics I want to talk about and kind of build some of those aspects in. Uh, Virginia's got a question here for area directors. Do you think it's best to have your area club, club success plans done before you as an area director do an area success plan? Ideally, I think it's a great idea for a success plan to be completed by the clubs before the area. And that's just because the area success plan then can really link up with what the clubs are planning. Unfortunately, I know a lot of clubs don't do success plans currently, and that's something that obviously by running things like this webinar and the training we've been doing, we're trying to encourage it because there's a huge benefit to it. But at the end of the day, if one of your clubs is holding out, they won't do a plan. And of course, you'll, you'll have to proceed with your own plan. But if you have an idea, if the clubs are aiming for distinguished, then you have an idea where where your area is likely to land. Navi just mentioned we can coach clubs to complete the plan. Absolutely, absolutely, that's a that's a great idea. If you're a member of a club, encourage your officers to complete a plan. If you're an area director, work with them, offer them to to sit down with them and work through part of the plan together. And I'm going to be providing a resource to folks that are on this webinar as well after the uh, the call, probably sometime in the next couple of days. I want to make sure I also include a link to the recording of this for people. And one of the things is a partially completed club success plan because I think that's the hardest part is getting started. It's, a, it's It can be an intimidating blank document, but once you have something in it to see, okay, this is what somebody else did, you have an idea where you're going. Uh, Sheila has, uh, has posted here that it seems to me that the area director club visit report is pretty much based on the club success plan. What would be wrong in asking the club to have it done prior to the first area director visit? Absolutely nothing. I think that would be a great idea if they have it drafted. It enables the area director to sit down with the club and actually walk through it. Uh, and it helps as as you mentioned, it is very linked with the club visit report. So for those of you that are, are club presidents, you, you likely know that the area director will be submitting a visit report for your club and it covers off a lot of things. I think the main thing that's not covered in the visit report is your team operating principles. A lot of that, your meeting frequency in terms of your executive meeting, how you handle conflicts. Those may not be on the, the club visit report, but the distinguished club goals are certainly on both. So that makes it easy to have that draft. You can, then your, when your area director asks you for that information, you can just pass it over and, and you don't have to go back to the, the team and say, okay, what was our plan again? And go from there. So that's uh, it's really nice to have that prepared in that sense. Now, what I want to do is actually bring up an example here of, a, of this portion of the club success plan that I was mentioning just a minute ago. 
So this is the example club success plan that I just quickly built a couple of weeks back. And it's just more or less half completed as a, as a little bit of something that we can provide to our clubs and use to just start the conversation about what a club success plan looks like. Uh, I, I will definitely send this out to everybody as well, just to, to make sure that uh, if, and if you're listening uh, from the recorded version, you can certainly contact me afterwards and I'd be happy to send you a copy of this because I think this um, just makes it all that much easier. So this part here on the first page is once again, it's getting into those team dynamics. It, it's talking about what your operation principles are, who's on the team and the values outside the the four core values of Toastmasters International, integrity, respect, service, and excellence. So I thought I'd throw in just, you know, honesty, community, fun, really that, that helps with the, uh, the fellowship. Uh, once again, example you can make it whatever you think is suitable for your club. Then we get into obstacles. What, what could be an obstacle uh, for the club? The big obstacle that we, we see here in District 21 is with recruitment of members. And I, I think a lot of North American districts uh, have the same challenge. Some of the districts over in Asia struggle with retention. So it, it is going to be unique for sure for your club, what, what you have the most challenge with. But it's nice to identify it and recognize it up front. And then essentially you get into, okay, this is how often the executive committee is going to meet and how we're going to, to deal with differences of opinions or how we're going to make decisions. And um, the reality is there's, there's probably no club in the world that does not have any type of um, politics or challenges from time to time with personalities and having this identified and everybody agreeing to how, how you're going to operate and, and solve these challenges means that it's less likely to run into any major bumps along the way. Then once you finish that, which is all the team building, you get into the area which is starting to focus on the Distinguished Club program. And this is another area that uh, a lot of folks, uh, I think, misunderstand. So it's nice to have it right here, the fact that, you know, your club, as of July 1st, in this example I built, has 13 members. So to be... To, to be a qualifying requirement of the Distinguished Club program, you need either 20 members or a net growth of at least five members. So this is a great demonstration of, all right, they had 13, so they don't need to get all the way to 20. If they got to 18, they could still qualify for the Distinguished Club program. Now, luckily this club is, uh, is a keener. They're planning on not just going for the basics, the 18, they wanna go all the way to up to, to 23 which is excellent. You can always plan for more. And they always say, if you have empty chairs, they will get filled. So I like that saying. And then it's a matter of identifying, what does that mean in terms of a net growth? So once again, if, if you're in a club, some, some members of the club, particularly new members, aren't going to understand well, where does that come from? And just remember that's as of July 1st in the program year, how many how many members were actively paid in the club uh, as of June 30th, technically, actually. But uh, but yeah, so in July 1st, you roll, you roll over into the new program year with a set number of members. And, and from there, essentially, you go through different sections of goals. So education goals, of course, is the first six goals of the Distinguished Club program. So you do a situation analysis. You talk about how members are motivated or not motivated to complete projects, how familiar members are with the education program, which is of course particularly important to consider right now as, uh, as uh, Dana, you mentioned, uh, pathways. That's a, that's a whole new dynamic for a lot of club members. And we've got people that are signing up right now in a pathways only world for those new members. And we've also got some of our more seasoned members who've been around for several years that 
or, or even potentially several months, depending on which region you're in, that are really looking to, to work that traditional program and complete it all the way through to Distinguished Toastmasters. So, uh, so that's an interesting dynamic and to have a good plan around that obviously is, uh, is a huge benefit. And then you get into, okay, here's the action plan. Uh, this is this is where you actually figure out the steps you're going to take to achieve every one of your goals and uh, you just kind of lay it on the table this is this is what we're planning for it is uh, and and the plan continues going on I didn't create a whole plan just because I, I wanted to give a taste of what the, the plan looks like essentially the rest of the plan follows the same type of process to get through each of the, the goals and create action plans for your club. But that's that's kind of what the, the gist of the plans are. Does anybody have any questions on the plans? So Virginia asks, how do clubs submit them to the area directors? There is no formal process to submit a, a club success plan to an area director uh, it could be done probably by by email uh, there is a digital version of the uh, the books that I mentioned a little earlier the distinguished club program and club success plan as well as the uh, Toastmasters International district recognition program manual both those are available online clubs could fill them out save them and email them to you they could print them out and and hand you a copy there's unfortunately like i said there's there's no way it's not available on club central or anything that's one of the uh, the downsides to this system on for uh, at this time anyways is uh, there's no way to submit them how optimist should we be when preparing our plans asked jeff uh that's a that's an excellent question, Jeff. I think it's uh, if you're a club of 10 members to, to say you're going to be at 40 at the end of the year is probably an unreasonable goal to set for yourself. I, I really it would encourage everyone to consider SMART goals, specific, measurable, uh, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So of course the time is, is the easiest part for, for these plans, of course, because everything goes through to June 30th. Uh, although hopefully your club has actions happening between now and then and not just everything in the last week before June 30th every year. But to, to um, I think you really have to think about what is realistic though. That's, that's where it gets a little more challenging because sometimes it's us that restrict ourselves and say, you know what, I, I think, for example, I was talking to somebody this, this uh, past week, uh, yesterday actually, and they said, our club didn't think we could have 20 members. We didn't have space in the meeting room for 20 members, so we always told ourselves that. And he said, then just a couple of weeks ago, we actually tested it out and we fit 20 people in just comfortably. So it's uh, how much are we kind of restricting ourselves in a way to say, you know what, we could never do this. And therefore let's not try versus, you know what, this is this is attainable. Uh, we, uh, we're in, we live in uh, an urban area, for example, and uh, you know, within a five minute walk, there's, there's 5,000 people available to us. Okay, well, then maybe there's a chance of, of getting some of those people to come in. So uh, it's a balance of, um, I, I don't know that it'd be optimist. It's, you do have to be a little bit realist with it, but you have to be uh, real to yourself as well in the sense of, not saying oh, you know, putting up a wall when there's no wall there. Sheila has asked if I understand correctly under pathways a DTM requires that someone serve as a club coach as well as charter a new club. Is this correct? Right now under the legacy program we only need to do one of these. This may have an effect on which way a grandfathered member goes and that's a that's an excellent question too. That is partially correct. So under Pathways, in order to achieve a Distinguished Toastmaster designation, there's, of course, you have to complete two paths. There's a DTM project. You have to be a club coach or a club mentor. So in other words, uh, helping a club that has 12 or fewer members or helping a club that's just chartered. 
and you have to either be a club sponsor so in other words you you start the new club or do a youth leadership program or speech craft program so you've got the three choices there so you can you could you have to do either club coach or mentor but the club sponsor is optional you could instead opt for a youth program or a speech craft program so i'm going to just quickly go into the distinguished club program now to uh to make sure we're all on the same page when it comes to that or sorry actually oh my goodness i'm getting lost in my own presentation must i use the template i don't think you have to in fact some of the best plans i have seen have come from people that have taken the same information from the template and just made it their own and personalized it and i did want to quickly show one to you before we moved on to the distinguished club program just because it was one that really inspired me and hopefully it gives the same same effect to you so this is uh, one of the clubs that i've been involved with uh, over the past number of years and when this was done it was actually a, a year when i was the immediate past club president so i was fortunate enough to be able to uh, to intercept this and get permission from the club president to share this as uh, as i provided some training so what he's done is essentially made a a PowerPoint presentation out of the club success plan via, I think, and then he put it into a PDF. So it's got club success plan, and then he's got the club business model, as he calls it, which uh, is an interesting way of looking at a club. I mean, in, in many ways, it is like running a business. You're trying to sign up the, the, the new members and uh, work the education program, and uh, there is definitely some. Uh, connections in in that sense to a business world which is which is nice because that's what we're trying to do is we're uh, we're building leaders where leaders are made as the uh, tagline of toastmasters international so if you're able to run a cl club successfully chances are those uh, those skills you've gained are transferable to business so i really like the way he does this and then talks about you know what the values are what the vision is for the club, and then gets into the plan. So here's the action items, here's who's responsible, and there's the when. So we're really going into smart goals. We make every Toastmaster meeting experience memorable. Okay, so what do you need to do to make those memorable? Never leave a guest sitting alone at, in a meeting. All executive members are responsible for that, and that's, I don't know why that started on July 27th. Hopefully that's a, a regular thing for every club, but it's it's certainly important to identify little things like that sometimes, because if you don't have a, a quote unquote protocol for how to entertain guests, then it can be difficult to get those guests to become members or at least to come back for a second visit. But this is certainly not the traditional template. This is uh, a template that our club president at the time essentially made themselves with the same things as you can see. There's the action plans related to everything. Um, here we're talking about the key operating goals, distinguished club program goals, how those are going to be achieved. This was from, uh, of course, before Pathways was rolled out. So they've got the uh, traditional awards here but everything's been identified and, and laid out in terms of the goals that they expect the club to achieve and then followed off by a, a sign off, just like the, the normal plan and a date as well at the bottom there. So that is just another example of a different format that could be used. There's nothing wrong with the, the format that the, um, that they've used. There's nothing wrong with the format that Toastmasters International provides I think it's a it's a personal perspective of what what works for your club what works for your group what do your members need so what is the measurement of success when it comes to these success plans and of course we've mentioned it a few times during the course of this uh, this webinar it is all about receiving that distinguished recognition and there's a fair bit of 
negativity sometimes surrounding the, the Distinguished Club program, which is a bit of a shame because really all it is is a measurement of your health as a club. If a club is replacing the members that they're losing and working the educational program, completing their basic administrative duties, then they will consistently be a distinguished club. That is the, I firmly believe that any club that can do that. And certainly there's, there's challenges around that. I know some of you are in smaller communities and I make it sound really easy. Oh yeah, you just do this, this, and this. Well, when you've got a population of, you know, for example, here in district 21, we have one club that's in a community of about 2,500 people. Well, if you've only got 2,500 people to recruit from, you're going to find it a little more challenging to, to keep that membership number up to 20. But if you've got 10,000 or, or more to draw from, then it should be possible to keep that 20 and therefore be able to keep the momentum going of being distinguished year on year. So, and, and you'll notice that as well in the plan is uh, we, we tend to lose 40% of our members every year. If we lose 40% of 20, then that means we need to recruit eight each year and the Distinguished Club program asks you to recruit eight new members. So it's purposely designed to keep a club healthy at that 20 number, which is really the minimum to be healthy. So I've mentioned this uh, on the screen right now, I've got the qualifying requirement, which is of course that net growth of five members or 20 members. So no matter if your club has 30 members to start the year, or you've got uh, 15 members, as long as you get to 20, you're always okay. You can grow by just five, that's a net growth, if you have less than 15 members at the start of the program year. So if you had 14, you need 19, etc. as long as it's a net growth of five. But of course, if you, if you have 30 and you have a net growth of five, that's even better. You're on the way to, to splitting into two clubs potentially. Uh, then it talks about the uh, what you get for the different goals, five, seven, nine, you'll often hear. What I really like to highlight here is the term goals. I hear a lot of people use points when it comes to the Distinguished Club program. Points sounds a lot like we're just checking off boxes and, and that's when we get people that start to think this is, oh, this is just an administrative thing. You know, Toastmasters International just wants us to keep doing this or keep doing that. Absolutely not. It's, it's a matter of achieving the goals for your club to continue to be healthy. So I encourage you, if that's one thing you learned from this webinar is, is take that back to your clubs, the, the terminology of goals. You'll hear people throughout the Toastmasters community that have different words they like to use for different things. And, and that's certainly one thing I love to hear. Uh, it's the same if, uh, if you talk about uh, Pat Johnson, past international president, always talks about corporate clubs. You, you don't use the word club with an organization. You use educational program. You don't use dual dues, you use tuition. Same idea here. Don't use points, use goals. Much more positive language. And this is the Distinguished Club program. So to highlight the question uh, of earlier regarding pathways, this is where the, the real change is over the next two program years. So that's this year and next year. You can still achieve the same Distinguished Club program as you could in prior years. But now for education program, there's still six goals but you have 12 options for the six goals. So you can achieve two competent communicator awards, for example, that's one goal, and you could have four level one, that's another goal, etc. So you can mix and match between pathways and traditional program education goals. So you're likely, because a lot of members are just getting into pathways, level one is a matter of four speeches through the year, you'll likely be able to get that four members completing level one relatively easy, even if you're a smaller club. And then you may have some members trying to finish up the traditional program. They'll be more on perhaps the advanced communicator 
side of things or advanced leader side even and it all counts so in a way i'd almost argue right now it's a bit easier because you have you have the choice of working both worlds and still getting that credit in the in the program for areas they just need to have no net club loss and the area director has to submit 75 percent of their visit reports and then they qualify for distinguished from 50 percent of their clubs being distinguished so an area of four clubs for example can have two distinguished clubs and the, the area would be distinguished as well division very similar to area no net club loss and 40 percent of the clubs in that division distinguished and that would meet the uh the qualifications to become a distinguished area and then just of course if they get more clubs distinguished they get a, a higher level of distinguished select distinguished at 45 presence distinguished potentially at 50 percent distinguished clubs except they also need a net growth of one club in that division in order to to achieve the presence distinguished division so that is the distinguished program and uh, of course every level has recognition possibilities uh, the club gets a shiny ribbon but i think more importantly they they've got a clean bill of health and that's really what matters at the end of the day is making sure that every club has a a nice healthy club whether that's uh, um, you know a, a club of, of 15 or a club of 20 as long as you've got some some good engaging meetings happening and you're doing your best to continue uh, increasing your membership uh, as close to 20 as you possibly can in the community you are and working that education program then uh, guests will continue to become members i think so this opens us back up to more discussion i i definitely as i mentioned at the start of the call want to make sure this is a two-way street uh, i've talked a lot and, and shared a lot but i'd love to hear any other questions people have okay so navi has mentioned uh, i've noticed confusion with 20 members or net growth not sure how we can help clear that that is indeed one of the biggest challenges I, I think we have in a lot of clubs is uh, a general misunderstanding. I consistently like to share a story. I, I share a lot of the same stories. Uh, and one of them is about a club that actually had met seven of the 10 goals and they finished the program year with 19 members. This was a couple of years back now. They contacted the district team in August to say, where's our ribbon? And it was absolutely heartbreaking to tell them that they were one member short of achieving their goals to become select distinguished. And, and that's why there was no ribbon for them. And they were in a smaller community in the uh, in a part of, of District 21 that is uh, relatively sparsely populated. So I don't know if there was a miscommunication or whether they just were never told that hey you know can you go knock on your neighbor's doors and and find somebody in the last couple of weeks of june there that's willing to become a member of your club and participate in your meetings so it's certainly uh very challenging to make sure that clubs are clear on that uh, because uh, the, even the net growth is a uh, is a challenge for some uh, what is a, a net growth you know, some people just think that that means get five new members. Well, five new members is is not enough unless you didn't lose anybody along the way. So how can we help with that? Well, that that's a age old question. I think it's just that awareness. And that's uh, I actually had a, a telephone call a little earlier today with uh, with someone that's running for uh, second vice president for Toastmasters International. And one of the things they suggested was, you know, hey, district director could call every single club president, make them aware. Well, that's not necessarily feasible, depending on the size of a district, but uh, certainly an area director, division director can be a little more actively involved in just making sure the club knows kind of what their target number is in terms of membership, because it's sad to see those cases like what I just shared. 
We've got a, another question here from Carolyn. Would love to see a copy of that alternative club success plan from Trestle. Yes, I'd be happy to share it on request. Be, and it is a club success plan indeed. So uh, if you ask me for it, I'm happy to share a copy of that anytime because uh, it just proves that you don't have to use the same template for everything, I think. You can be a little bit flexible. Main thing is making a plan. I also had a comment here that I suggest clubs continue to encourage members to complete CLs and ALBs. Yeah, I mean, in the short term, for sure, uh, complete those, the competent leaders and advanced leader bronze. It is, um, it's something, unfortunately, that will be phased out, of course, in the next two years, but um, I, I suspect with, with pathways, we'll, we, we will see some of it. It's just in a different order. Uh, I, I suspect you're referring to the, the meeting roles, and it is uh, in a slightly different order now in terms of, like, for example, you start out really with speech evaluator in level one, which is a bit of a shock, but um, I think we'll get used to it in, in the time ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. Sean is asking, is it currently easier to be distinguished before the legacy program disappears? And will it be harder in 2020? I think you mean uh, distinguished club. Um, I would think that it's probably easiest now. That's, that's my own personal opinion is that it's easier now because you have the choice of, of both worlds. We've got some members that are very keen to finish off in the current program. And we also have lots of new members that, you know, four speeches will not be difficult. And, uh, and we can certainly challenge each other. I, I personally am going to challenge myself to go for a level three by April. And now that I've said it on a recorded webinar, I guess I have to make that happen. So uh, I think it's, it's totally doable to, to be distinguished now. Will it be harder though after the uh, the end of the, the uh, rollout uh, period, the two two year period? I don't know that it'll be harder. I think with pathways, one of the benefits is we you know, once we're all in it and working along, you you receive recognition more often. That's one of the benefits of this program. Like I said, four speeches to get level one. It was ten speeches to get a competent communicator. So. With that, we should see members that progress a little faster and earn more awards. But until we fully transitioned, I, I don't know that we'll, we'll really have a great grasp on it. But I think it, it probably will be a smidget easier than it was prior to the rollout. Um, and maybe a little more challenging than what it is now, just because right now you've got 12 goals uh, or 12 things you, that can accomplish six goals. Uh, Michael's mentioned, I would like to see more credit for advanced awards in the Distinguished Club program, especially with many people trying to achieve DTM. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is uh, something that uh, I 110% agree with you, that uh, we should certainly see a lot more advanced awards. And uh, if people are still working on, on CCs, it, you know, finish it off and, and move on to pathways. If you're serious about getting a DTM then get onto those advanced awards and uh, and and help because the the challenge we have as well and this is this is really part of something that could be considered for your plans is we have a bunch of members that are going to sign up and regardless when when you rolled out the whole world is rolled out now so whether like I know we have people on the phone from region 4 which was I believe in April, if I remember correctly, uh, Region 1 was in March. Anybody that joined after that time has to work Pathways. And if you get one new member that signs up and, and they're in Pathways and the rest of the club is working the traditional program, it's going to be very hard to convince that one member that the program they're working is in fact the program they should be working because they're not seeing anybody else do it. So it's not just a matter of you and and the club changing it's also a matter of what are the new, new guests and members going to say when you tell them they have to work something different so um so there is that fine line as well go for those advanced awards if you're going for your dtm if not to take the exit now to pathways and and start working that as hard as you can and 
And that way we'll see clubs with a nice balance of those working for the DTM and those that are getting more comfortable with pathways. Uh, Ganol has a question here. My understanding, if the club started with 12 members on July 1st, in order for the club to be distinguished, they need at least 17 paid members on June 30th. That's exactly correct, yes. So 12 members would need 17. It's only if you had 15 or more that you have to get to 20. Otherwise, you just need net gain of five. But the important thing to note there is if the club starts with 12 members, they get five members and they lose three, that that doesn't qualify for them for the Distinguished Club Program because, of course, they only have a net gain of two. They'll sit at the end of the following year at 14 members. So that's, I think, where maybe a lot of people get confused because I've heard that before. Well, we got five new members. That's great, but you also lost three, so it doesn't count per se. Um, so you, you do have it correct, though. 12 uh, would be 17. All right, so I just wanted to share a couple of resources as well. Um, first of all, the Toastmasters International site is an excellent resource. And few people, I find, know this in, in the many people I've talked to about it. it there's actually a resource library. So if you go just to the toastmasters.org homepage, click on resources, there's an area called resource library. And when you go to the resource library, you actually have a suite of things you can, you can actually search for there. If you're looking for something in particular, it's, uh, it's very handy. Club success plans can be found in there, as is uh, district plans, I believe, as well, the district recognition program manual. So that's one of the, the powers of that, um, of that suite is you could find it if you want it in another language as well. So if your club, for example, meets in, I don't know, uh, let's say uh, French or Spanish, uh, you could actually have the plan in that language or if you have some club members that would prefer to read in their native tongue, it may be possible for them to download in their native language and read it as well. Read in uh, marshals.org slash TM tools. Uh, George Marshall, he's from District 57 in California, has created a, a great resource there. I strongly encourage you to check, check it out and play around with it. You can look yourself up and see when you received education awards, you can find out the club's distinguished history so you've got an idea what you're working with if your club has been consistently distinguished for the last five years then you know you're working with a club that's making it a, a habit to be distinguished year after year and maybe you, you don't though maybe you've got pockets where you weren't distinguished and it gives you an opportunity to figure out kind of what were the challenges in those years the applicable manuals, of course, uh, I've talked about the success plans, but there's tons more in those manuals. Uh, there is uh, area visit reports, for example, in the, dis the um, district recognition program. Uh, there's more on the distinguished club in the, in the club success plan manual. So definitely take a look at those. They're available online if you don't have a hard copy. And I will, I, I say I'm happy to send you part of the club success plan, but I plan to send it to you um, regardless. So you don't have to ask for it. I will certainly send it. And uh, I hope that it provides a great resource to you in, in talking to your club, or if you're an area division director in the clubs that you're serving. And uh, if you have other resources, feel free to share them as well. I'm always happy to collect a list of resources and, and share them with others. We have two minutes left. I do have a couple more questions that have come up though, and I want to make sure we address them quickly as well. Uh, Virginia asked, are there clubs who refuse to do a success plan? Absolutely. And if they refuse to do a success plan, as, as disappointing as that is, I think we just it's just one of those things we have to accept. There's, there's no uh, formal requirement for them to, to do the plan. Um, but if we can convince them the benefits, you know, if your club, for example, doesn't want to do a success plan, just talking about, hey, you put all this work in in July to make the plan, but delivering on the plan then is just a breeze because you're not panicking, you know, 
first week of February, realizing it's Toastmasters month, and oh my goodness, now we got to put a we want to put an open house together and trying to rush it all together in two weeks. Instead, in your plan, you've you've had that foresight in July, and therefore you've got a committee together in say November to to plan it. Karen is asking. Since so many are asking for the document, can you share with all? I'd like it also. For sure, Karen, I'd be happy to share that with everyone as well. No problem whatsoever. And to confirm, as working towards a Triple Crown achievement, we can include pathways levels. Yes. At this time, that will count as well. In the future, that may have to be looked at, but I think for the moment, for sure, we're going to do three combination of pathway and traditionals. Um, with just on that note, one last thing on pathways. If you achieve a competent communicator and a level one in one year, it counts both times for the Distinguished Club program. So just a heads up on that um, for those of you that are finishing a competent communicator and also plan to do a level one. So it is eight o'clock and in uh, Pacific time, I do not want to keep anybody any longer. But I do also want to make sure you've got my contact information. My email address is at the bottom of the screen. For those of you joining by telephone, it is mbownd21 at gmail.com. That is mbownd21 at gmail.com. Always happy to connect with you, whether you're from District 21 or elsewhere. It's always a, a great opportunity to connect and learn from each other and uh, help all of our clubs achieve excellence. Thanks for joining and we will talk soon.